probably in mid twenties, maybe sort of probably little bits and pieces, probably when I was about 25, 26 here in Australia. Well, I'm an actor and it was just sort of part of like someone said, oh, you know, can you do a Richard Burton voice, I think, or something like that at the time. And uh, I sort of said, yes, I could. And, and then my voice of career sort of took off later on, took off later on, yeah. Some, some things are sometimes quite challenging. I had one the other day where I had to do sort of lots of those um, African sounds, like <coughs> those click sounds. And, and when you're trying to say something at the same time as doing those, it was quite difficult. Yeah, it was like a, something when you... Uh, challenging things are things like that, things like you've never been asked to do them before. And then someone says, OK, can you do that? And you say, well, I suppose I'll give it a go. Yeah. Oh, the sort of the camaraderie of the industry, you know, the sort of getting together with people and having fun and doing something, uh, you know, uh, sometimes quite creative, you know. Yeah, and being professional about it, hopefully. You know. Yeah, I've done lots of those. But I think I was trying to think when I sort of got your list of questions you were going to ask. Um, uh, I do remember one particular session where. I actually climbed into a bath full of water, just with my underpants on, uh, to do some sort of recording that somebody had an idea that it might be quite interesting to actually do it in authentic conditions. So there was I lying almost stark bollock naked in a, in a bath, uh, surrounded by people from an advertising agency. <laughs> that, was, that was fairly bizarre. <laughs> companionable and relatively confident and used to and used to doing it you know just familiar with the territory and that's really all we do as voiceover artists we get familiar with the territory and then we can probably handle most things people ask us to do because we've been there before or been somewhere close to that before just done a campaign now for the new sort of university that joined with Melbourne and Ballarat um, and that was great fun to do. To feel as I was doing, actually doing something for education, plus the, it was a rather it was quite a beautiful campaign with beautiful pictures and things. Uh, I also enjoy doing the football. I love doing the football. That sort of I always find that one of my most pleasing pleasing jobs, just because it's just so outrageous. You know. <laughs> mm, sometimes I I have had a couple of occasions where the drug caffeine has overtaken the ability to speak. Uh, and I've done it on a couple of occasions, uh, once on film and one, once with, in a voiceover. And I had, a, I had a, like, someone said, would you like a coffee? And I said, oh, you can have a short black, please. So I had a short black and then something happened and I had another short black. And I got to that stage where my brain was going so quickly I couldn't get the words out. And I couldn't slow down. And this was a friend of mine, Miles Pedersen, who wanted me to do it very slowly, languid sort of read. And it just <laughs> So I think we took half an hour off and I drank lots of water and then it was all okay. But it really was extreme. It was a really extreme reaction. Because I was with Cathy before when she was Mor when she was at Morris's and when she moved, I moved with her because I thought she was best person to be with. Uh, so I haven't really got very much experience of other places and other people. I just know that I'm pretty happy where I am. It's pretty nice. Not consciously, but sometimes with particular jobs I will. I'll, I'll generally do something. I don't know, maybe just do a Shakespeare sonnet or something in the morning, just something to sort of, you know, or whistle or hum or something like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Mellifluous. <laughs> Resonant. I don't know, one word's really hard. 